What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day Tuesday. We got a heck of a news day today. In this week's edition of Triathlon News Day, the company that owns Ironman IPOs and it flops. Brutal. Triathlon is declining all over North America and unfortunately we had another death in a race. They're all over the place. Very sad story. Stick around. What's up triathletes? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day Tuesday where every single Tuesday, as long as I'm not traveling and there is news to talk about in the triathlon world, we go over what's gone on over the past week. As always, if you're new here, make sure you stick around to the end where everyone's favorite part of Triathlon News Day is shared. That's a story from the Trainiac community. We got a heck of a good story this week that was submitted. And as always, full links to everything we talk about will be in the description below. Let's start off with Wanda Sports Group. That is the company that owns the company that runs Ironman. So Wanda Sports Group owns World Triathlon Corporation. World Triathlon Corporation puts on all of the Ironman events. Now Wanda Sports Group IPO'd last Friday. They were targeting an $8 per share IPO. It opened at $6 per share before shares even traded, it had already declined by almost 30%. As of recording this right now, it's declined even more and trades at $4.80 a share, making it the second worst IPO of the year on the NASDAQ. Not a very good indication. Now further to this, even though Wanda Sports Group is going to make $219 million off this IPO, it values the company at $705 million, which is a very, very far cry from the $1.85 billion that Wanda Holdings Company paid to acquire World Triathlon Corporation and in Infront Sports, which is what makes up Wanda Sports Group now. So we're talking more than a 50% decline since 2015, showing just how tight, how kind of unsuccessful, how not making it rain the world of triathlon is. This then relates to the next story that USA Triathlon announced that over the past five years, their membership numbers have declined by 25%. In addition to that, the oldest age category that they have membership numbers for is much older than it used to be, and it's the male age 45 to 49. Now that puts USA Triathlon in a very precarious spot because all of these athletes are getting to that stage in their life where they're thinking about slowing down, spending less. Triathlon is a very, very expensive sport. Thinking about retiring, spending time with grandkids, all of these things that I saw back when I was a professional curler decimated the club ranks in Canada. I think I should actually probably do a full video on the decline of triathlon, what I'm seeing right now. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. I think I gotta do that. Now related to USA Triathlon, they announced that in 2020 and 2021, Milwaukee is gonna be the host city for the USA Triathlon Age Group Nationals. This was the host city back in 2013 to 2015. And apparently it was really, really popular with a lot of the age group competitors there. And it seems to be that kind of small-ish to care sort of city, but big enough to make a big deal about it and have good crowd support is like the sweet spot for a lot of like the best triathlon venues all around the world. We think about Penticton and all the surrounding communities, Lake Placid and the surrounding communities, Coeur d'Alene and all the surrounding towns. When you can get a town that is large enough to draw really big crowds and small enough to get a lot of good volunteer support, that's what makes a great race. Roth, perfect example. So if that's the case with Milwaukee, very happy that it's going back to a city like that. Now in some unfortunate news, another athlete was killed during an Ironman race. This time it was 44 year old Kristen Oswald, who during the bike portion of Half Ironman Ohio was reported to have ridden 
off of the controlled area of the course into traffic, getting hit by a semi truck. And the patrols that were on the scene ended up stating that the driver of the truck is not at all responsible. Seeing the event with her husband who was out on the course at the time, and even after she was pronounced dead, he didn't know it. He was out on the course because they had to take a little while to track him down to inform him. And yeah, it's all just very, very sad. And it just is an unfortunate reminder that we have to get more frequently, it seems like, that even though we are on a race course, we have to take our safety very, very seriously. We can't just turn our brains off and think about nothing but power and watts. It's our responsibility to keep ourselves safe. Not to say that Kristen didn't, but that's a message to everyone here. So my heart goes out to Kristen's family. I'm very sorry for what you're going through right now. Oh, let's run through some of the results. There were some great ones out there. Matt Russell made a big comeback with his first big win, winning full Ironman Lake Placid in the men's only pro field. This is, I believe his first, is it? Pretty sure it's his first win since the near life ending accident that he encountered in Ironman Kona two years ago. In a women's only pro field, Heather Wartell won on home soil at Ironman Canada for the last time that it'll be held in Whistler. Full Ironman Hamburg had both a men's and a women's pro field and the men's race was won by Kristen Hogenhaug and Susie Cheatham won the women's race dropping a unbelievable bike split being the only female to go under nine hours. Half Ironman Santa Rosa was won by Sam Appleton and Plug for the Triathlon Terran podcast. If you are an up and coming pro and you want to win a race, do like Chelsea Sodoro did and many of our guests have done. Come on the Triathlon Terran podcast and we'll send you off to great things. Chelsea Sodoro won half Ironman Santa Rosa, beating legends in the sport like Marinda Carfrey, Paula Findlay. I think that she is a real up and comer and gonna be one of the favorites to kind of be the next generation of half and full Ironman athletes out there. And half Ironman distance challenge Prague was held with Florian Angert winning on the men's side and on the women's side, yes, 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 I will never have to pronounce her name improperly again, which apparently I was actually doing pretty well at. And you said you can't pronounce my name. So it's Radka Kalefeld, and I think you're doing pretty well. So Kalefeld. She won on the women's side. Thank you for sending that in, Radka, and congratulations. Keep winning so we can use that clip. Now, speaking about the Triathlon Terran podcast, it is still the most highly ranked triathlon podcast in the world on Apple Podcasts, thanks to excellent guests like Maggie Walsh. Maggie is a member of the Zwift Triathlon Academy, who in her very first triathlon, first ever, she ended up winning the overall female title in a full Ironman. Second triathlon ever, did the same thing, beating a ton of the pros. So we published that podcast this past week and later tonight, I am going to be chatting with Dr. Dan Plews, the coach who trained me up to challenge Roth and himself is a low carb triathlete who actually won Ironman Kona 2018, setting the all time amateur course record. We got some good ones. And let's wrap up today with heck of a Trainiac story that goes. Hi Taryn, my name is Tudor Weeks. I came out of the military in 1993 and I went on to have a couple of desk jobs while not doing much exercise. Obviously, I ballooned as I would always overeat and drink compared to my energy output. However, things were made real for me when I lost a great friend to an obesity related heart attack in 2012. It was a shock to my system. I was approaching my 50th birthday and I weighed 20 stone. 218 pounds, 127 kilograms. I decided I needed to lose weight or I'd be following the friend who had died. Over a period of a year, I lost 70 pounds or 31 kilograms. I remarried, Jackie is my rock. I decided to do a triathlon. So I signed up for an Olympic triathlon in 2013. I've gone on to compete in two full Ironman races, five half Ironman races and a whole bunch of Olympic and sprint races. One weird centurion distance plus a number of marathon, half marathon runs. In 2017, I achieved Ironman bronze all world athlete status. This guy's killing it. And was looking forward to full 2018 season of Ironman racing, signing up for Ironman Wales and two 70.3 events 
on either side of that race. But I had one more hurdle to overcome. In June 2018, at the age of 55, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer with scuppered all of my plans. However, thanks to a great health plan with my job and a fit body and mind from triathlon, I had the surgery in September and have not looked back. Ironman allowed me to transfer my 2018 Ironman Wales place to this year and I signed up to do another 70.3. That 70.3 was a couple of weeks ago and I posted a personal best of 535. I'm now focused on Ironman Wales in September. And I just want to encourage anyone out there that it's never too late to make changes for the good of your health and well-being. I have amazing support from my wife and family plus a really good mate who's also an Ironman. At no point during all this have I felt sorry for myself. I treated it much the same as a race I set a strategy, a rest, slow recovery, build up, and over a 12 to 15 week period, it was just another hill to climb. Tudor. P.S. I've included a photo of my dog Guinness, who's sometimes my run partner. We like dogs here, we like Tudor. Couldn't have said it better myself. Your message there is great. It's never too late. Get out there, do an Ironman, and if you aren't already subscribed and you like these news days, hit that subscribe button below. Plues was texting me about the podcast. It's going to be good. Later, Trainiacs.